Good morning, everybody. Warm welcome to St. Mary's. Not quite as warm as it was last Sunday. It's quite pleasant this morning, I think you'll agree. Um, just a few um, notices before we start our service. The advertisement for our vacancy has re-emerged in the Church Times again, so please pray that somebody this time will see it and feel, feel the um, God's will to, to apply. <clears throat> Um, you will know that we talked last Sunday about lifts to church. I want to slightly revise that. What we've done now is we've set up a WhatsApp group for drivers. So if you are happy to offer lifts, if you could let me know, um, I will add you to the list. This is not just to benefit services. This is to any church services. So if you struggle to come to East Burkholt Church and you would like a lift at any time, all you have to do is contact Michelle. And then Michelle will put a post on the WhatsApp group and somebody will say, I can do it, and hopefully that will work. So that's how we're going to try it. So if you need a lift on any Sunday, please let Michelle know. If you are happy to offer a lift, and that doesn't mean every Sunday because we all have other things that are going on, but if you are able at some point to offer a lift, if you could let me know and your mobile number, I will add you to the driver's group. Uh, just a reminder for the safeguarding session here on Thursday afternoon, this is mandatory, the basic uh, training for safeguarding for the vast majority of us working in church. Um, and Mark B is coming from the diocese to provide a face-to-face -face session for those who don't feel confident about doing it online. So we've, we've got um, over 20 booked in, but there's still time for you to book if you need to be here uh, at 2.30 on Thursday, please. Um, Christian aid boxes are collected. It's been on the pew sheet. I reminded you last week, Reuben is kindly going to take any that you have got here back for Karen. And finally, I would like to warmly welcome Alan back with us again. He came very early on in the vacancy, and we're very happy to have you again, Alan. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. It's lovely to be here with you all. I'm going to start by publishing some bands of marriage. I publish the bands of marriage between Andrew Robert Sears and Annalee Elizabeth Scheel, both single and resident in the parish of Greenwich, London. This is for the third time of asking if any of you knows a reason in, in law why these two should not be married should not be married, then you are to declare it now. And that's the right answer. Thank you. So let's pray for them. Father God, we pray for Andrew and Annalee in these final weeks before their, their wedding. May they be conscious of your presence in their life now and on the wedding day and forevermore. Amen. So you should all have a copy of the order of service for today. And I'm stymied because I haven't got a hymn list and I can't read it from there. Thank you. So if you are able or comfortable, would you like to stand to sing number 642?
by himself has sworn, we on his oath depend. We shall on eagles' wings are born to help us end. We shall behold his face, we shall his power adore, and sing the Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the words of comfort our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. <clears throat> Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Hear what St Paul says. This saying is true and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear what St John says. If anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
the collect set for today, the 15th Sunday of Trinity. Lord God, defend your church from all false teaching and give to your people knowledge of your truth that we may enjoy eternal life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. This is it for the first readings. The Old Testament reading is taken from Genesis chapter 50, beginning at verse 15. When Joseph's brothers saw that their father Jacob was dead, they said, What if Joseph holds a grudge against us and he pays us back for all the wrong we did to him? So they sent word to Joseph, saying, Your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers then came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. I am in the place of God. You are intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children and he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from Romans 14 verses 1 to 12. Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not, and the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand, for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind He who regards one day as special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. For none of us lives to himself alone, and none of us dies to himself alone. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So, whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. For this very reason, Christ died and returned to life so that he might be the Lord of both dead and the living. You then, why do you judge your brother? Or why do you look down on your brother? For we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, Every knee will bow before me, every tongue will confess to God. So then, each of us will give an account of himself to God. This is the word of the Lord. Uh, 
as a reminder of our dependency on God, we stand to sing number 379. Lead us, Heavenly Father, lead us all the world's tempestuous sea. 379. Patience. Patience with me, 
Um, is that better? Yes, I can hear me better as well. Can, you can't all quite see me, but never mind, you're not missing much. So I was talking about the lectionary and how it's used all over the world and how it astonishes me that the passages chosen for each day often have a very common theme to them. It brings out some of the richness of our Bibles and shows how the 69 books relate. It's not always so easy to see the links, but today their commonality really shines out. Did you notice? Were you listening? I'm not going to test you, don't worry. In the first, the Old Testament reading from the book of Genesis, we hear how, despite all the dreadful things his brothers have done to him, Joseph not only forgives, but provides for them. In the reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, Paul is exhorting the Christians to go easy on each other, not to despise brothers and sisters, and certainly not to pass judgment on them or talk about them behind their back. And in the gospel reading, which I hope you heard, there is a stark warning. Do as you would be done by. Some of you might recognise that phrase from Charles Kingsley's book, The Water Babies. It's a, a book which really struck me in my childhood. There were two characters, Mrs. Be Done By As You Did and Mrs. Do As You Would Be Done By. Hold that thought. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus asks, sorry, Peter asks Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, 77 times, or seven times, 70 times. That might seem a random number, but actually I've discovered it's biblical and comes from earlier on in the book of Genesis. Do you remember Cain and Abel? Despite his crime of killing his brother Abel, Cain was God-protected. God promised Cain, who was anxious about his own safety for obvious reasons, that if anybody did kill him, God would wreak vengeance seven times. Later on in the book, a chap called Lamech kills someone and claims that he will be avenged 70 times seven times. Now, we mustn't make too much of, it, of this, but there, back in the Old Testament, is this theme of numbers which would have been known to Jesus and his listeners. That seven times and 70 times seven was about the consequence of doing something. And in that case, it was about vengeance. In the Gospel reading, those numbers are used for the complete opposite. That's what we're hearing so what we are hearing about is the eradication of revenge, that sort of violent cycle we get into when we might be angry or unforgiving someone. So it's significant that we see Jesus saying 70 times 7 in the context of forgiving someone. It's obviously not about a specific number. This is beyond counting, that's the point. This is about how we are to live we are always to be forgiving with one another. So in the Gospel, we've got that extreme contrast between the incredible generosity of the king who forgives his servant, who has incurred a massive debt, 10,000 talents, but that same servant, when confronting a fellow servant who owes him just 100 denarii, a paltry sum really, refuses to forgive his fellow. The people hearing Jesus describe this would quickly have done the maths and realised that the servant was forgiven an immense sum, something like 1,600 times what was owed to the king. They would, they would be amazed that the servant could not find it in his heart to forgive someone for the tiny amount. When we consider forgiving a brother or sister or sin or wrongdoing, we sometimes get it into our minds that the sin has to be something really serious. It's not. It's actually about the way we treat one another all the time. It's about forgiving the 100 denarii sins, not just the 10,000 talent type sins. 
It's the way in which we respond to one another, the way in which we look down on or demean or dismiss or discount or ignore or fail to pay attention to or fail to listen to or fail to respond to the need of those around us. We need to be utterly forgiving. I don't pretend it's easy. Bishop Martin, in his weekly video blog, was reflecting on this, and he quoted Bonhoeffer, writing in his book, which is called Life Together. Bonhoeffer gives an instruction to his seminarians that they must never speak about one another except face to face. Think about that. What he means is, you don't speak about anybody behind their back. And if you do, Bonhoeffer says, you have to go and tell the person what you said about them. Bonhoeffer gives an extraordinary discipline of being just really straightforward and respectful of one another all the time. Well, it made me think, wouldn't it be amazing if we could all put our hearts and minds to it to live in that way? to choose to be forgiving and accepting and respectful and loving of one another all the time. I'm sure we'd all like to be treated that way, but do we do it ourselves? I think back to Mrs. Do As You Would Be Done By. Joseph forgave his brothers in spite of all the dreadful things they'd done to him. Even they realised that their reaction to an aggravating, spoiled little brother was completely out of proportion. So they are amazed at Joseph's acts of forgiveness. They know what they really deserve, but Joseph has got his eye on that bigger picture. He has seen what God has done through the violent actions of his brothers, and he knows that despite them, Joseph has the foresight to do things that have saved his people from starvation at the hands of the Egyptians. Paul exhorts the Christians to go easy on each other, not to despise brothers and sisters about what they eat or whatever, and certainly not to pass judgment on them or talk about them behind their back. Paul, too, has the bigger picture. Forgiveness is not just about you and God, or me and God. It's about how we interact and live with those around us. So the purpose of the parable and the gospel is to make us realize that God has already forgiven us a tremendous amount at a considerable cost. And if we accept that, then there is no justification whatsoever for not forgiving each other. Now, I'm realistic to know there's a lot going on in the world that makes us angry and uncomfortable. And Paul's talk about people who won't eat meat seems irrelevant. But if we put these three Bible readings together in the bigger context they need, we here in the West can see our society as one that needs a lot of forgiveness itself. And that might make us more careful about holding other cultures to account. I wonder what kind of reactions on our part might bring life out of death? What may, might make an act of abominable violence, a goad to the creation of a better society. It might seem a pipe dream, but it's happened before, and it can happen again. I keep thinking about Mrs. Do as you would be done by. Amen. If you are comfortable, let's stand as we say the Nicene Creed on page 8. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. 
for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Would you like to sit or kneel for our time of intercession? We have a moment of silence before God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Today there is no response after each prayer, but a moment of silence as we consider what the prayer just said. Holy Trinity, we come before you in faith and obedience, that you know our prayers before we think them, know whether our prayers are real or not, always listen to us, always give us an answer, although we may not understand that answer, always hold us accountable for what we say and what we do. Holy Trinity, make your church, your representation here on earth, be responsible and accountable to you in all that they say and preach and do. Free the church to love its people as it loves itself. Free the church to say sorry for its mistakes. Holy Trinity, we pray for our new priest, whenever and whoever. We know the decision is in your hands. Holy Trinity, your world is governed by people in authority, in power and in trust. We know how this is abused and corrupted so that millions of your people of all ages and all genders suffer and are broken. Open their eyes and minds to see the evil they do and bring them to their knees in sorrow and in repentance. Give strength to King Charles and the royal family. Protect them from enemies within and enemies without. Holy Trinity, the past weeks, months and years have seen many natural disasters throughout this world, your world. We recognize that some of these are not natural, but man-made disasters. Disasters caused by human choices that have led to destruction of your planet and your people. Make everyone aware that your creation is precious, unique, and time-limited. We think of the people in Morocco and Libya. 
Jesus weeps. Holy Trinity, the world, our country, and the NHS are all in pain and are sick. But in and through you, all healing is possible. We know that healing is in your hands and not ours. We thank you for the gifts of pharmacology, surgery, diagnostics and counselling in helping to heal. But this must be holistic, whole body healing, spiritual as well as physical. Bless all who care and tend to the sick, wherever they may be. Holy Trinity, we weep in disbelief and sorrow at the abuse of the most vulnerable of humans, babies, as seen in the events of Chester and Nottingham. Evil is all around us. Holy Trinity, our earthly life is inevitably time limited and death may occur at any age. We thank you that you have told us that you are with each one of us. From the twinkle in our parents' eye or the time of conception to our last heartbeat and breath and beyond. You have told us wherever we are so are you. Holy Trinity, come alongside those who mourn and miss people at this time. <coughs> the family and friends of Roger Godwin, Jean Chambers, Valerie Barford, Celia Crane, Keith Osborne, Pamela Green, and all who grieve and miss someone who they desperately love. Holy Trinity, thank you for the privilege of giving us responsibilities as your disciples. Stop us from behaving like an elite club and use us to share your love and your hope with everyone. Everyone is made in God's image. Enable us to really love our neighbour as we love ourselves. Help us to approach Jesus' commission and prayer to love our neighbour with gratitude, humility, and joy, seeking to make a positive impact on all those around us. Holy Trinity, as we leave this building and enter the real world that is confused, is in fear, is in pain, we ask you to open our eyes, our hearts and minds to be the people you would want us to be. To be responsible disciples of Jesus and accountable to you. To forgive those who ask our forgiveness. To show mercy and graciousness to those who might be in our debt or our power to look for and to listen to those who are in need of any type, in pain, in distress, to come alongside them, to be kind, to be patient, to be gentle, to be honest, to smile, and to be joyful. Holy Trinity, we come before you knowing that we are accountable only to you, only you can and will judge us for our life here on earth. But only you can love us as no one else can love us. And for that, we thank you. And we say together, Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen.
If you're comfortable, please stand. Jesus said, Blessed are the peacemakers. They shall be called children of God. We meet in the name of Christ and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please greet yourself in the accustomed way. And when you are reunited with your hymn book, and whilst I go and sort my microphone out, we shall sing number 69, Be Thou My Guardian and My Guide. Just to test, is the microphone working? Yes. Oh, jolly good. There is a tiny buzz, but we'll have to live with that. We'll pretend it's... Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, and of your own do we give you. Amen. I'm following Eucharistic prayer. Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, to give thanks and praise. 
Father, you made the world and love your creation. If your Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Saviour, his dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. By your Holy Spirit, you make us your friends. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels, praising you and singing. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his commands, send your Holy Spirit on us and on these goods, gifts, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. Supper with his friends and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, shared it with them and said, Take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The cup of wine. Again he gave you thanks, shared it and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Remember all that Jesus did. We plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth and your kingdom comes. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to be with you forever at your table in heaven. Through Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior has taught, so, as we give those who sin against us, lead us not into t- The glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. The body of in our body, because we share in one bread.
draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Amen. Number 687, through the night of doubt and sorrow, on goes the pilgrim band. 687. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.